Recently, I shared a video in which I explained why I'm less bullish today on realty income than I used to be in the past. This was one of my best performing videos of all time. And a lot of you asked me in the comment section to do a follow up comparing realty income to Agri Realty, which is one of its close peers. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why I think that Agri Realty, ticker symbol ADC, is a better investment opportunity than realty income. But before I get into it, could you please do me a favor and like this video? That'll really help me a lot to grow the channel. We are now approaching 10,000 subscribers and I really appreciate all your support. Thank you very much. So let's start here first by discussing some of the similarities between realty income and Agri Realty. Both REITs focus on class A at these properties often occupied by investment grade ready tenants. Then both of these REITs have strong investment grade ready balance sheets themselves as well. They also have long track records of significant market outperformance. They both pay a dividend on a monthly basis. And finally, they have both recently seen their share prices crash and now trade at historically low valuations. A lot of investors here appear to think that realty income is a better investment opportunity than agri realty because of two main reasons. First of all, if you go back in history and look at their performances since going public, you'll see that realty income has delivered quite a bit higher total returns than agri realty. But it's not just that. Realty income has also been a better dividend growth stock over the long run. It has now managed to grow its dividend for nearly 30 years in a row, whereas agri realty was forced to cut its dividend following the great financial crisis. Back then, agri realty was a much smaller REIT and it was heavily concentrated on one tenant called Borders that filed for bankruptcy and forced agri realty to reposition its portfolio and cut its dividend. So on the surface here, it may seem that realty income is a better investment opportunity because after all, it has managed to deliver higher total returns with better dividend growth and lower risk over time than agri realty. But there is this famous saying that I'm sure you've heard before that past performance is not indicative of future results. And I think that this applies really well to this situation. If you now shorten the time frame and look at the past 10 year results, you will see that agri realty has done a lot better than realty income ever since it became a really large REIT. This really highlights the number one reason why I think that agri realty is a better investment opportunity today. And it is simply that realty income is today getting too big for its own good and it has lost its mojo in a way. To understand why size matters so much for an at least REIT, you must recognize that these REITs grow primarily by acquiring new properties. Therefore, the bigger you are and the harder it becomes to grow because you need to buy a huge amount of properties just to keep the ball rolling. But past a certain point, this becomes an issue because there are just so many properties to acquire in the market. And so this then forces you to step out of your circle of competence and invest in new geographies and new property sectors in which you may not be an expert. We've already seen this happen with Realty Income's recent investments into European countries, as well as into vertical farming, a casino, and other property sectors that are really outside of its main circle of competence, which are traditional net lease properties. On the other hand, the advantage of being a smaller net lease street is that every new acquisition has a larger impact on your bottom line. Therefore, you're gonna be less pressured to make new acquisitions. You're gonna be able to be much more selective and flexible. And it's in this type of situation where a good management team is really going to be able to add a lot of value by selecting the best investment opportunities in its circle of competence. Well, today, Realty Income and Agri Realty are very similar REITs in terms of the quality of their portfolio, their balance sheet, their management and track record and so on. However, Realty Income is seven times bigger than agri realty. This is a big deal because what it essentially means is that realty income needs to buy seven times more properties than agri realty just to keep the ball rolling. That's a very tough job at the scale of realty income. It's losing in flexibility. It cannot be quite as selective anymore. It must buy properties that don't enjoy quite as much of a spread over its cost of capital. It's now also stepping outside of its circle of competence, investing in new geographies and in new property sectors in which it may not be an expert. And so I think that this is really the main reason why it has underperformed agri realty over the past 10 years. And I think that this underperformance is going to continue over the long run. So so this is really the number one advantage that I see for Agri Realty today, but there are quite a few others and I've summarized them in a table that I'll put on a screen right now. Here you'll see that Agri Realty has a much higher exposure to investment grade rated tenants than Realty Income, which means that its properties are probably on average a bit higher in quality and less risky. Then Agri Realty also generates 
10% of its revenue from ground leases, which is also an advantage and I'll discuss that a bit later. Its cost of equity is also a bit lower and the spreads on its new investments are also a bit higher. It also has a stronger balance sheet with a lower LTV, a lower debt to EBITDA. It also has far fewer debt maturities coming its way in the coming years, which is a big advantage in today's rising interest rate environment. And then a final point to consider here is that so far this year, the insiders of AgriRealty have really bought a lot of shares of the company. In total, their purchases now surpassed 7 million. Over the same time period, the insiders of Realty Income really haven't bought much at all. On the contrary, they've been selling quite a few shares. Perhaps this may show you that even the insiders of Realty Income are now losing their confidence a bit in their future growth prospects, whereas those insiders of AgriRealty are more confident than ever. All of these factors that I presented in this table individually are not very significant, but combined together, I think that they are a major advantage for AgriRealty. It shows that on average, AgriRealty has a better portfolio, a stronger balance sheet, and better growth prospects. A final point I want to quickly discuss till here is the ground leases. As I mentioned earlier, AgriRealty earns about 12% of its rental income from ground leases, which are essentially land investments by which the landowner then rents the land to a tenant that builds a property on top of it. And for a fixed period of time, this tenant is going to be able to use its improvements in exchange of a ground rent. And once this lease then expires, the improvements revert back to the landowner at no cost. The advantage here for the tenant is that the rent that it's going to pay for the land is going to be quite a bit lower than what it would pay if it was also leasing the building. On the flip side, the advantage for the landowner, so AgriRealty in this case, is that it's going to get a very safe income stream of ground rents during the lease period. And then once the lease expires, it's going to get a building free of charge. Today, the average remaining lease term on these ground leases is only 11 years, which means that over the coming 10 years, we're going to see these ground leases gradually expire adding more upside for the shareholders of AgriRealty. Here, some of you may tell me that, yes, okay, AgriRealty has better growth prospects, it has a slightly better portfolio and a better balance sheet, but on the flip side, Realty Income is offering a slightly higher yield and its valuation is a bit lower. That's true, but the difference really isn't significant. I'll put a table somewhere on the screen here so you'll see that the FFO multiples of both rates are more or less the same, especially if you adjust for the lower leverage of AgriRealty. I don't think that the difference in valuation and yield level here are going to be significant enough for realty income to make up for all of the disadvantages that I mentioned earlier. And for this reason, I'm pretty confident that AgriRealty is going to keep on outperforming on the long run. And so if I had to pick one read today, it would be AgriRealty. This is a good example of why I think that realty income really isn't your best pick today. As I explained in today's video, here we have a peer that's even higher in quality than realty income in many ways, and yet it's set to offer higher total returns over time. That of course doesn't mean that Realty Income is a bad investment. I own a position myself, I expect it to do reasonably well over time. But my point here is that don't just blindly buy Realty Income because it's a popular read that gets a lot of hype. Now, if you want to access my entire real money read portfolio, feel free to join my rate newsletter, High Yield Landlord for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, if you could like the video, that would really help me a lot to grow the channel. Really appreciate all your support. Thank you and see you at my next one. Bye bye.